This video introduces my favorite algorithm for computing Nash equilibria. Like the ones we saw last time, it's incomplete, meaning the algorithm is not guaranteed to work, but I find that it's easy to implement, efficient to run, and quite useful in practice. The name Replicator Dynamics suggests its origin in evolutionary game theory, where it's used to study the dynamics of a population, where various traits are replicating over time, where in that context the mixed strategy probabilities correspond to population proportions for different traits, and the deviation payoffs we calculate correspond to the fitness of a particular trait in the current population. And over time, the population proportion of any given trait changes in proportion to its fitness. And this idea can be formulated as a differential equation, or as a discrete update. And the update version leads us to an iterative algorithm, much like the ones we saw last time. When we previously encountered evolutionary game theory and talked about evolutionarily stable strategies, we focused specifically on symmetric games, and replicator dynamics in its evolutionary game theory origin is also intended for symmetric games, and perhaps unsurprisingly that's where it's most effective at finding Nash equilibria. But since we're considering incomplete algorithms that may or may not succeed on any particular game, I'm going to show the extension of replicator dynamics to arbitrary asymmetric games. So, replicator dynamics begins with some state of the population, which from our perspective means it starts with some arbitrary mixed strategy profile. Then, as usual, we will compute deviation payoffs for each action of each player against that mixed strategy profile. And we'll use those deviation payoffs to perform an update that, in essence, is multiplying each probability by the corresponding deviation payoff, and then renormalizing. In this rock-paper-scissors variant, starting from an initial profile where both players are mixing uniformly, we can calculate the deviation payoffs exactly the same way we did in the last video. Since player 1 has a slight preference for winning with rock, and player 2 has a slight preference for winning with scissors, when they each mix uniformly, player 1 has a slightly higher deviation payoff for rock than for paper or scissors, and likewise player 2 has a slightly higher deviation payoff for scissors. But now we will use these deviation payoffs to perform a multiplicative update on the mixed strategy probabilities. And because it's possible for deviation payoffs to be negative, these are just expected utilities, and so sometimes the expected utility of some action will be less than zero. If we were to multiply the probabilities by a negative number, that would give us an invalid result. So we first adjust the deviation payoffs to ensure that we will never get a negative result. And we can do that by subtracting each player's minimum payoff in the game. In this particular payoff matrix, both players have a minimum payoff of negative 1. And so if we add 1 to the deviation payoffs we calculated, we know that the result will never be negative. And since we're just adding a constant to the utilities, this is a positive affine transformation, which we know has no effect on the incentives in the game. And after this transformation, we can use these adjusted deviation payoffs as multipliers for the probabilities. So, for each action, we will multiply the current probability of that action by its adjusted deviation payoff. But these weights we've just calculated no longer sum to 1, so we need to renormalize by dividing through by the sum of weights 
in order to get back a valid probability distribution for each player. Player 1's weights sum to 10 ninths, so we can multiply all of these by 9 tenths to get the new probability distribution, and we can do the same for player 2. So we've now completed one iteration of replicator dynamics, and we see that the actions with the best deviation payoffs had their probabilities upweighted since they got multiplied by larger values, and the actions with lower deviation payoffs had their probabilities decreased when we performed the normalization step. And now we can use these mixed strategies as the new profile for another iteration. Which means we'll need to recalculate the deviation payoffs under this new profile. So for player 1, playing rock gives an expected utility of minus 3 tenths plus 8 tenths. Playing paper gives an expected utility of plus 3 tenths minus 4 tenths. And playing scissors gives an expected utility of minus 3 tenths plus 3 tenths. Whereas for player 2, Rock gives an expected utility of minus 3 tenths plus 3 tenths. Paper gives an expected utility of plus 4 tenths minus 3 tenths. And Scissors gives a deviation payoff of minus 4 tenths plus 6 tenths. And here's a case where we ended up with a negative deviation payoff. So, we are glad to be subtracting off the minimum payoff to ensure we get only positive multipliers. And now, to perform our update, we need to multiply these adjusted deviation payoffs by the probabilities from our mixed strategy profile. For player 1's first action, we get 4 tenths times 15 tenths. For the second action, we get 3 tenths times 9 tenths. And for the last one, we get 30 over 100. For player 2's first action, we again get 3 tenths. For their second action, we get 3 tenths times 11 tenths. And for their last action, we get 4 tenths times 12 tenths. And so now we'll normalize these weights back into mixed strategies. Here, when we add 60 plus 27 plus 30 over 100, we'll get 117 over 100. So we can multiply by 100 over 117 to normalize. And when we add up player 2's probabilities, 30 plus 33 plus 48 over 100 gives us 111 over 100, and we can divide by that to get player 2's new mixed strategy. And again, our update has increased the probability of the best actions and decreased the probability of the worst actions. Hopefully over time we will be moving towards a Nash equilibrium where all of the strategies a player is using have the same expected utility. So we can think of this replicator dynamics update as taking steps within the space of mixed strategy profiles. And our hope is that over time, those steps will narrow in on a Nash equilibrium. And to justify that, we should think about what would happen if we gave a Nash equilibrium as the input profile to this update. Well, in a Nash equilibrium, we know that Every action being played with non-zero probability must be a best response. And so if multiple actions have non-zero probability, for them to all be best responses, they must all have identical deviation payoffs. And so for all actions being played, we'll get the same adjusted deviation payoffs. 
and then we will multiply the probabilities by the adjusted deviation payoffs, meaning that for all of the actions being played, they'll be multiplied by the same thing, and for all of the actions not being played, they have probability zero, and so no matter what we multiply them by, they will still have probability zero. And then when we perform the normalization, we will divide all of the probabilities by the same amount, meaning that for all of the non-zero probabilities, we will have multiplied them by the same amount and then divided them by the same amount, getting us back to exactly where we started. So a Nash equilibrium is a fixed point of this replicator dynamics update. But unfortunately, Replicator Dynamics also has other fixed points that may not be Nash equilibria. For example, if we take a corner of the simplotope, where every player is playing one specific action with 100% probability, if my strategy has probability zero on all but one of my actions, then Replicator Dynamics can't move those probabilities away from zero, and so we'll be stuck at exactly that point. In addition, it's entirely possible for Replicator Dynamics to diverge away from a Nash equilibrium of the game. If we start Replicator Dynamics from exactly on the Nash equilibrium, we know that it will stay put, but there can be cases where we start it ever so slightly removed from a Nash equilibrium, and instead of converging towards that Nash equilibrium, it flies away. And there are games where all of the Nash equilibria have no basin of attraction, no region where replicator dynamics will converge to the equilibrium. And so there are some games that replicator dynamics just can't solve. But, in large games, it tends to be the case that there are some equilibria replicator dynamics can find, and others that it can't, and what we find depends entirely on where we happen to initialize our first profile. And so, a very effective way to use replicator dynamics is to restart it many times from many different profiles spread around the simplotope. So by using many restarts of the replicator dynamics algorithm from different random initial profiles, we can often succeed in finding Nash equilibria. But since many of the replicator dynamics trajectories will not get to a Nash equilibrium, they could find some other fixed point or cycle without converging. We need to check the regret of the profile we end up with after looping through many iterations. And so our overall algorithm is to generate many different random initial profiles. For each of those profiles, we run many iterations of replicator dynamics. And then at the end, we check which of those trajectories ended at an approximate Nash equilibrium, and we return the collection of however many epsilon Nash equilibria we found.